absent from flesh, oh blissful thought, what joy this moment brings. Freed from the blame my sin has brought, from pain and death and its sting. Absent from flesh, O oh, glorious day, in one triumphant stroke, my reckon it paid, my charges dropped, and the red bonds round my hands, they are broke. Hello, welcome to worship. My name is Reverend Fran Cooper. I'm the lead pastor at St. Mark's United Methodist Church. I'm glad you've joined us today. And before we get into our worship topic, I'd like to spend just a few moments thanking you. I wanna thank you for the many ways you are tuning in online, and especially for those people who make this online worship possible. We're very grateful for the musicians, the various videographers, our video editor extraordinaire, Stacy Rothwell, our producer, Selena, and just the many people who participate in worship and make this possible. And it would not be possible if you were not viewing in, so thank you for that. Thank you also for going to stmarksmidlow.com and finding those many ways to stay engaged in these awkward days when we're not often in this building. Thank you for the giving on the Breeze app or for mailing in your giving. 
Thank you for the ways that you are looking at those opportunities on that one page and, and finding ways to do service to others by bringing food or those turkey bags or, or for bringing your prayer request or praying for the others. Thank you for tuning into those Zoom and small group classes that we have. And thank you for going to our Facebook page and liking it because you're gonna get a message there nearly every day from our church, something inspirational, some way to stay connected. These are all very important ways for you to be a part of our mission here at St. Mark's to grow, live, and love as followers of Christ. So now we begin to complete this series on the fruit of the Spirit. This is our ninth day in that series. So just uh, reminding us of the scripture from Galatians 5, 22 through 23. These words say that the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness. And today's word is self-control. I like that one. Self and it's control, like you're, you're on a horse and you're reining that horse in. Self-control. As I have read this book by Trask and Goodall, listen to the way that self-control follows all the others that we've already been hearing about in these last few weeks. They say, when we are loving, we are more joyful. When we have love and joy, we have peace. When we have love, joy, and peace, patience is their companion. Kindness will naturally emanate from a disposition of love, joy, peace, patience, and goodness. With these portions of the fruit functioning, a foundation is then laid for self-control, which allows us to live a life of balance and gives us the strength to stand against excesses. See how they're all connected together. So we're gonna loop that up today and, and let's have our prayer for self-control. Father God, give me strength to have self-control. I have my struggles and temptations, and I know that evil forces will use them against me. Lord, help me to have the self-control to fight my temptations and remain steady on the path you have set before me. I know that if I give in, my feet will fail me and I will stumble. If that happens, Lord, convict my spirit to not continue in my temptations and help me, Father, to stand up strong and lean on you to continue in the way set before me. I pray that in my self-control, I will hear you more clearly so that you can change me to be more like you. And now would you join me? in the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The scripture lesson today comes from 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 11. God has bestowed upon us through his divine power everything we need for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and virtue. The result is that he has given us through these things, his precious and wonderful promises. And the purpose of all this is so that you may run from the corruption of lust that is in the world and become partakers of the divine nature, 
So, because of this, you should strain every nerve to supplement your faith with virtue, and your virtue with knowledge, and your knowledge with self-control, and your self-control with patience, and your patience with piety, and your piety with family affection, and your family affection with love. If you have these things in plentiful supply, you see, you will not be wasting your time or failing to bear fruit in relation to your knowledge of our Lord Jesus, the Messiah. Someone who doesn't have these things, in fact, is so short-sighted as to be actually blind and has forgotten what it means to be cleansed from earlier sins. So, my dear family, you must make the effort all the more to confirm that God has called you and chosen you. If you do this, you will never trip up. That is how you will have richly laid out before you an entrance into the kingdom of God's coming age, the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, the Messiah. It's a great scripture for how to live and how God gives us the possibility to live that way. So let me ask you, have you ever thought about which superhero you would like to be? Maybe you would love to fly like Superman. Maybe you're like my husband and you'd like to be Batman. He likes Batman because of those awesome toys and gadgets he has and of course the Batmobile, right? Maybe you would choose Spider-Man, or my friend Selena wants to be Wonder Woman. Maybe one of the X-Men. I tell you the one that gets very little press, but whose power I am really drawn to, is the woman in Marvel's Fantastic Four, the Invisible Woman. Do you know her? This is Susan Storm, and she can bend light waves that make her invisible and project her hyperspace energy and put up a force field. These two superpowers help when she's defending herself, and who wouldn't want at times to be invisible to your foes? Or have that, that force field where she can whip up this energy and throw off or fling away any negative thing that is coming to her, or at least hold it at bay. I thought about this superpower when I thought about today's fruit, self-control. While Susan Storm is always trying to marshal her energy against an external force, as Christians, we're always marshaling our energy for an internal force. We need a, a kind of force that can be called up, if you will, and that force is the fruit of self-control. The combination of those two words, self-control, come from the Greek, en kratos. In, kratos, strength. Inward, strength. So here's the deal. We make hundreds of decisions every week. We feel countless emotions throughout every day, and the situation is, how is our life powered? Who controls it? How do we decide what we're going to do and why we're going to make a certain decision? Self-control is one of the greatest abilities we can have. The message translation calls this fruit the ability to marshal and direct your energies wisely. God knows we could all use this this superpower in today's world, and the Holy Spirit is ready to give it if we're ready to receive it. Carter Jackson, one of our confirmation students, in a bit is gonna show you his offering, and, and he had the topic self-control, and I love what he did with his topic. He turned it into a comic strip uh, about a situation that students his age, or younger or older, deal with on a, on a daily basis. The comic strip is about video games and the pull these video games have on us. Many of these games seem harmless at first, and, 
and, and many of us can use them rightly, but they are seductive, they are addictive, and too much attention to the video games will prevent us from doing the things that we actually should be doing with a lot of our time. Now, I'm not a gamer, but I have this thing. I cannot tell you, frankly, how many times I pick up this gadget. It's like a, a fifth limb of my body, really. Have you ever lost your cell phone? And while you're searching for it, you actually begin looking like an addict on crack. It's not video games that gets me, but a, a video about baking and for some reason ice and cakes can, can consume me for, for a very long time. I can get mesmerized by that or by Facebook comments or election results or coronavirus alerts. I can't tell you how many times I refreshed the election results on this thing Tuesday night and Wednesday night. In fact, I did it in the middle of the night, Tuesday night, several times. Now, could I have used my time better, like sleeping? Of course I could. What I looked like the next day, it wasn't pretty. There is a system on this thing called screen time. I don't know if you found it, but I discovered when I went on the screen time setting that I spend over five hours a day as an average using this. An election day, it was up 25% more. I do use it for work, but not all the time. I think you ought to check that screen time and see. You'll be surprised how much screen time you have. And if that's not your problem, maybe that's not it. Perhaps you're the person who, rather than having one of these, has your television on 24-7, listening to that 24 hours of news. Same thing. And if it's not that, maybe you have to marshal your energy wisely when you walk by the refrigerator or the cookie jar, or when you click on certain websites on your laptop. Or you need to marshal your energy when you get sucked into those not so nice conversations that come up in certain groups. This is a force or a foe that we all face. This is an Earth Day poster. It says, we have met the enemy and he is us. This poster is actually a phrase that got borrowed by Walt Kelly for this comic strip of Pogo. It was first used by a commander during the War of 1812 when they were being defeated. These words, we have met the enemy and he is us. They tell us about our tendency to create our own problems. Oh, we love to blame people for things, but a lot of times we just have ourselves to blame. We try to instill self-control, do we not, from a very young age. We try to teach children a discipline, self-discipline. There's a whole book of the Bible called Proverbs. And in the book of the Bible, Proverbs, there's a wise parent that is giving advice or Proverbs to these sons, trying to help them know what they need to grow up. Here's one of those. A lot of them are about self-control. Here's one. It's not good to eat too much honey. Hmm, that's that cookie jar refrigerator thing. <laughs> and it's not good to seek honors for yourself. Huh, that's that attention seeking, maybe for those of us who are addicted to selfies on Instagram or opinions on Twitter. And then it goes on to say, a person without self-control is like a city with broken down walls. Here's another proverb. Above all, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. The teacher in Proverbs suggests that our hearts, let's say our inner natures, need to be guarded. I think of a sentinel that is keeping watch over some famous person or treasure or place, and how terrible it would be if they were actually found asleep on the job. Rather than guarding our life, 
a lot of times we are asleep and we let the enemy walk right in, get a good look around, even move in until one day we realize that this foe has taken up most of the space in our most precious inner room. We need to keep guard. Otherwise, we will be like a city with broken down walls. One of the church saints, Teresa of Avila, wrote a book called The Interior Castle. It's a book about her spiritual journey, and this saint began to think of her own inner life as if it was a, a castle made up with all of these chambers or rooms in it. In the first chamber, Teresa of Avila talks about how we need a guard to watch out for what she calls nasty creatures like serpents and vipers and poisonous reptiles. She says that these creatures creep into the soul and do not let the soul perceive radiance. It's not that our souls are wicked, but that she is so immersed in the things of the world, still so caught up in possession or honor or business affairs that, that even though she may long to gaze upon the beauty of the interior castle, all these attachments distract her from doing so. She cannot seem to extricate herself from so many entanglements. Teresa goes on to say that anyone who wishes to move ahead on the path must try to give up unnecessary objects and preoccupations, thus the need for self-control. Are you thinking now of, of entanglements in your life, whether it be consuming work or consuming people or consuming objects or consuming thoughts? Are they like reptiles creeping into your precious soul? In medieval times when Teresa was living, their castles would have this portcullis to keep unwanted enemies out. It's a pretty massive gate that could be slammed down on enemies. And are you, are you thinking of the door or gate that is needed in your own castle to keep your interior life safe and sound and even radiant as Teresa describes it can be? This is about protecting that precious soul that God created soul, the soul that Jesus our Lord died to save, the soul that the Holy Spirit longs to rule and live in. Self-control allows us to put up that guard, to say no to these creeping, crawly pests and entanglements. And you're thinking about those no's you need for today, that self-control. Control. But self-control also means saying yes to some things. Have you ever known someone who exhibits such disciplined living by their decisions that they do seem to have superpowers? I was thinking about this self-control this week as I was watching with my husband, his giants play the Buccaneers this week. The Buccaneers won. God bless the giants. But as much as anything, it had to do with discipline or self-control of the players on the field, and in particular, the self-control or the discipline of the quarterbacks. One quarterback who, who really has some skill, the giant quarterback, is skilled but lacked discipline, and he would panic when time would be running out or he'd get tangled up by his foes tackling him, and he'd make a wild throw that would end up leading into an interception. He's young, and it's okay, Giants. He's got a lot of time to learn how to turn that around. But then there's this other quarterback, Tom Brady, who has won six Super Bowls and played in nine of them. Now, Tom Brady is 43 years old, old for a quarterback. They usually retire in their mid-30s. And everyone wants to know how he's so superhuman. Did you know that he actually wrote a self-help book about this? <laughs> It's called How to Achieve a Lifetime of Sustained Peak Performance. And he calls it the TB12 method, the Tom Brady 12 method. Brady, for him, it's mostly about what he says yes to. 
He says yes to things like certain food that have ratios of meat and, and vegetables and, and where they get caught and, and where they, they get grown. Brady says yes to certain drinks and especially hydration with water, but not just any time. You don't drink the water during your meal. If you're Tom, you drink it before or after the meal. Brady says yes to positive influences in his life, he says, so he can avoid feeling like a victim or always blaming or thinking about negative things. Brady says yes to weightlifting and also to flexibility training. Brady says yes to regular sleep, goes to bed at a certain hour, and he wakes up early so he can get on the practice field, get this, at 4.30 or 5 a.m., something that the Giants quarterback is saying he's going to start trying to do himself. So here is this practical suggestion for all of us. We need to find a model or models in our life that are, that are good at saying yes to things, to good things. Who is that Christian who sustains their faith, not just for a season, but, but for a life? Who do you know that is so good at saying yes to the right things? It's a good chance the things they say yes to are, are these spiritual disciplines in the church. Things like Bible reading, and study, prayer, a diet of certain foods, and yes, fasting at times, regular attendance and worship, giving generously, serving others. Which of these disciplines do you currently say yes to? What still needs to be among your yes? How can you bring that into your soul's castle? That is self-control. So as we conclude this series on the fruit of the Spirit, someone has said it like this. Imagine this with me today, <clears throat> that you have a cup. You're holding a cup of coffee, and then somebody bumps into you, causing you to spill what's in your cup. You didn't spill tea. You didn't spill grape juice or soda. You spilled coffee because coffee is what was in your cup. If you'd had tea in your cup, you would have spilled tea. If you'd had soda in your cup, you would have spilled soda. See, the point is this. Whatever is inside your cup is what's going to spill out of your cup if it gets bumped or shaken. We each are a vessel, not unlike this cup. Now, when we look on the outside, we can't quite tell what's inside of it. But when events of life start to bump us or shake us up, whatever's inside is going to come spilling out. We've discovered that during 2020. So we ask ourselves, what is in my cup? Is it love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control? Or is it anger and bitterness? Could it be anxiety, impatience, mean-spiritedness, ill will, faithlessness, harshness, lack of discipline? Sometimes we present to the world one thing, but what's inside there is actually something very different. And it comes out when a trial or a temptation or an irritation or a conflict or an inconvenience kind of shakes us up. So let's commit ourselves to be filled with the fruit of the Spirit so that the grace of God can indeed be that which spills out of us. Amen.
that video from our confirmation student, Carter Jackson, as he is introduced by his mentor, Rick Wingen. Hi, St. Mark's. My name is Rick Wingen, and I would like to introduce you to Carter Jackson. I have had the privilege and pleasure of spending time and getting to know Carter through the Young Men's Small Group at Church, learning about many Christian topics. If asked to describe Carter, I would say he is a thinker. Watching him think about this new faith journey has been an inspiration to me in my journey. I believe he put a lot of thought into his confirmation before answering the questions asked by Pastor Fran. I congratulate him and wish him well on his journey. I think he knows I will always be there for him. And the scripture that we chose for Fruit of the Spirit comes from Proverbs chapter 25, verses 27 and 28. Like cold water to a weary soul, excuse me, it is not good to eat too much honey, nor is it honorable to scratch, to search our matters that are too deep. Like a city whose walls are broken through is a person who lacks self-control. And now Carter is going to explain how God moves in his life. I experienced God in my life through relationships with friends and family and animals. I also experienced God through church. My fruit of the spirit is self-control. Self-control is your ability to control your desires. The Holy Spirit gives us the ability to choose how best to meet our needs and say no to the things that are not good for us. I created a comic strip that shows a kid not have self-control. In the first scene, the kid's parents are leaving for work meeting and saying, do your homework and no video games. In the next scene, it shows the boy getting an idea to play video games. And then the next several scenes shows the kid playing video games the entire time his parents are gone. And his homework is sitting on the counter has not been done. The following scene shows the kid eating unhealthy foods that his parents did not want him to eat. After eating, the boy goes back to playing video games, including an appropriate game. Two hours later in the final scene, his parents come home and ask him if he had done his homework. The kid is now left to endure the consequences of not having self-control. The end. This comment, this comment de demonstrates what might happen when you do not use self-control. In this example, the kid disappointed his parents and embarrassed himself by not demonstrating self-control when he did not do the things his parents asked him to do. He must face whatever punishment is coming from making the wrong choices. And now we've both written a prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit and the fruits of that Spirit. We especially thank you for the fruit of self-control. We know the devil is always at work tempting us and trying to come between us and God. We thank you, Father, for, for arming us with the Holy Spirit so we can resist the temptation of Satan. We ask that you will continue to guide and protect the members of our church family and we ask all this in your son's precious name. Thank you, Lord, for letting us have self-control. Even though there are times when we may not use self-control, thank you for forgiveness and providing us with the opportunity to try again 
and for continuing to love us when we make mistakes. Amen. Amen. for joining us today and for these uh, messages on the fruit of the Spirit. I pray that this fruit is born in your life so that we can make a difference in our world. And so receive this benediction today. May the blessings of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ 
and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And may God be with you till we meet again. Amen.